We base that also upon the natural age or the common age of that time for a girl to be married or espoused. We've already talked about her name. We talked about where she was born. We talked about her tribe. We talked about that she was poor because of her sacrifice. To compare that to go back just so you know I'm not making it up. Let's look at Leviticus chapter 5 verse 7. Now we're going to compare that with Luke 2.24. Remember Luke 24 states that she and Joseph offered up two turtle doves as a sacrifice. We see that that's in line with Luke, with Luke. Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 7. Would someone please find that? So it said if you could not afford to bring a lamb, is basically what it's getting at. What's it talking about? The cost system. Not everyone had the same amount of wealth. Not everybody had the same amount of money. If we read that passage a little bit more, probably a little bit before that, we'd find that it would talk about the sacrifice for the rich. You know, bring an ox and bring a bull. If you didn't have that, then you bring a lamb. If you didn't have that, then you brought two turtle doves. What's that? That's indicating your class system. That's indicating where you fell into things. So we know that Mary was poor. And if we look at her betrothal period, she was betrothed to Joseph between the age of 12 and 14. We base that upon the norm of that time. Once again, scripture is silent on her age. But we know that Jesus was not conceived through human merit, but rather it was immaculate. God informs us clearly of that one. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 35, it said, The power of the Most High shall come upon you. What is that? That is the Holy, Holy Ghost coming upon her and conceiving in her the Son of God. During this time, she went and visited her brother, her brother, her cousin Elizabeth, who also had a grand revelation, a supernatural intervention during this time, because she became impregnated with the forerunner to Jesus Christ, not by the Holy Ghost, but she was going to bring forth the one who was going to go before and try to prepare the way of the hearts of men and women before Christ's ministry, and that was John the Baptist. And not only that, but Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel, instructing her. Because I'm not a woman, but I can only imagine what would happen one day if you woke up and you, all of a sudden you were pregnant and you had no idea how it came to be. I mean, that would be a little scary. Or you'd think, are those wise tales that they told me growing up true? Did I get a watermelon seed in my belly and it's beginning to grow? But we know that she had a supernatural encounter. We know that Gabriel came to deliver the message that this is what's going to take place. During this time, her and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem for the time of taxation. <coughs> and afterwards, they traveled to the temple. And there are a lot of verses there. You all have them. You can read them whenever you want. You have the notes. But we're running out of time, so we're kind of taking the life of Mary and getting fast forward. Surprise, surprise, Mary and Joseph got married. I know none of us saw that coming. After all these years of hearing the Christmas account, they finally got married. No, we know that they got married. They had several children together. We know this. We've already read this. Simeon, Judas, they had daughters. They had sons. A mixture of boys and girls. And while they were married, they went and took, went to Jerusalem as they were supposed to do. Or as a yearly visit, and Jesus got lost. And there was no warning to put out through all Jerusalem that he was lost. So they had to go search for him and scurry on his own, on their own. And they found him at the age of twelve, sitting in the temple teaching. 
apparently, like I said, as we look at the Word of God, based upon what we see, what we study, the fact that Jesus was the head of the household, we find that on the cross, we've already read that. Apparently, Joseph died at some time in Christ's life, between the age of 12 and the age of 30. And he was there no longer. But Mary, Joseph, Mary and Joseph, Mary and Jesus and some of his relatives went to a wedding in Cana. And they ran out of the drink. So what did they do? They didn't know where to turn, but Mary knew where to turn. And she told the servants, whatsoever he says, do it. And Jesus rebukes her, rebukes her and tells her, Woman, it's not my time yet. Do you not know this? And yet we get the best grape juice that that um, wedding had ever known. The best was supposed to come out at the end, um, beginning of the wedding, and bring out the worst at the end. But instead, they were complaining because, why did you save the best for the last? Why did it happen? Because Jesus told them to fill water with it and it turned to water. Turned to grape juice. So what are some lessons that we can learn in two minutes from Mary, the mother of Jesus? In Luke chapter 1, verse 38, no matter how scary life gets, no matter if we understand it or not, submit to the will of God. Whatsoever He says, do it. Make sure that we are submissive. Make sure that we're fired. You know, there are some times that God will tell us to do things, and it's not our place to question. If he says it, do it. Be submissive. Be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. When we look at the life of Mary according to Deuteronomy chapter 22, 23, and 24, submit no matter the cost. What was going to happen to Mary when everyone found out that she was pregnant and she wasn't married yet? Do you remember what um, Jewish law was? She was going to get stoned. She was going to get killed. But she submitted to God regardless of the price, regardless of the consequences, even though her life was on the line. And do you think that stoning was a once and done deal for when it came to somebody that was pregnant? She had to face that every single day for the time that she started showing that it was visible. Because that danger was there every single day. Because sometimes it's hard to hide when you're pregnant. It's obvious. So when we look at Mary's pregnancy trial, the conservative estimation is around nine months. But like I said, at some point she would have physically started showing. And the death for pregnancy outside of marriage was death. She under, Here's another important one. She understood her role that she was in and when she was in. Because we all play different roles. There were times when she was a mother to Jesus. There were times when she was a disciple and follower as well. He was the one leading her and guiding her. How do we know this? Because Jesus commanded his disciples to go and tarry in the upper room until the Comforter would be sent. Who was in the upper room waiting for the Comforter to come? And she specifically mentioned Mary, the mother of Jesus. As Christians, we need to understand our role, which one we're in, and when we're in it. Sometimes we're in a position of leadership. Other times, we're not in that position. Someone else is over us. We need to understand our role in the church. I'm wrapping up even though there's a ton of other notes. When we look at the Word of God, each one of us play a role in the church. What did Paul tell us in the book of, I'm going to go with Corinthians to save my own body. I can't remember if it was first or second. The body of Christ is composed of many different members. What happens if a hand tries to be a foot or a foot tries to be a hand? The body does not go the function the way it's supposed to be. 
if you're walking and all of a sudden one foot decides that it wants to be the head or hand, well now you're off balance and you're going to fall on your face. What? If we would, would take a bunch of marbles and put them under pressure or even shake up the can, what's going to happen? They're going to collide, they're going to bounce off each one after another, but they're never going to mesh. But if you take a bunch of grapes and put them under pressure, they can be squeezed and be used for something useful because all those grapes come together to form one purpose. You know, the body of Christ is not this person being the head and that person being the head. But each one of us needs to realize what our role is when we're in that role. That way we may function as the true body of Christ effectively. And I'm out of time. Maybe we'll come back to this next week. Maybe we won't. Because we have one month to get through the Christmas account, even though we talk about it every year. Does anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to add? I have one. Yes. How soon after found out that she was pregnant, how soon was it that they might have gotten married? It might have been not long after she was The Bible says she took her to see his wife. And once again, it's one of those things, brother, as far as I remember, Scripture doesn't say anything. And when it's one of those things we have to step back and just say, I don't know. Scripture doesn't say. It says he took her to be his wife. It doesn't say how long ago. But it might have been almost right away. It might have been almost all right away. Maybe it wasn't right away. Maybe you cheated on me. Immaculate, yeah. I'll believe that one when the cows go home. Yeah, but the angel of God he went to told the man to not do anything to But do we know how long after the angel went to him? See, if the scripture doesn't say a time frame, then sometimes we just have to step back and say, I don't know. But this is the way that it turned out. We know what scripture tells us clear that we can rest upon. Some things we can try to conclude, but are we right? I don't know. What we can rest on being accurate, 100% accurate, is what does the Word of God say? If it doesn't say a time frame, then maybe we don't know a time frame. <coughs> Some things we can have in this historical document and this historical document, but when it comes down to salvation and everything, everything is based upon the Word of God. Sometimes the Scripture doesn't say, we just don't know. Anything else? If not, we're going to wrap up because we're all right past. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that your God who reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels on the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost be moved, making himself visible if you so choose, Lord. Even right now, Lord, we pray that you anoint the pastor's mind and his lips as he, and his heart as he prepares to bring forth your word today. I pray, Lord, that your words will just flow, flow uh, calmly and correctly out of his mouth, Lord. And as they come into his mind, let everything be clearly as you'd have it, Lord. May our hearts and minds be clear that they would be plowed even, that your word may fall on it, that we may remember it throughout the week, that we would meditate upon it, and that it would grow in our heart, that we would be transformed into your very image even farther. We know the song leader and the musicians, as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords, Lord. As they lead us in the songs you'd have us to sing, we ask, Lord, that your will be done in everything that is said and done here today, Lord. May our hearts and our minds be in check, that we may be in one mindset and one accord. That we may be in unity, Lord. That you may just move here as you so choose. That there would be no hindrance in any way. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus.